Well, I'm glad in an episode about Montreal you brought out a Florida Panthers jersey. Did you not? Did you not see this? We have a spreadsheet on what we're doing and a, a group chat. Did you not? Did you not get the memo? I can I can have that memo sent again. Just you gotta put a cover letter on your TBS if, report. If we could like cut the act for a moment just to be serious, I don't listen well, and I know that's gonna come as a shock to a lot of you. I, I don't follow directions as state. If you need to take a moment, Phil, I get it. Uh, but uh, this was seen wait, a long wait, time wait. ago. I, I've just been blasting brass bananas in my head. I, what have you been talking about? Ah, I was going to say, this is this has been uh, projected quite frequently over the course of about 10 or 12 years on my second two 12th grade report cards. I, it was the leading comment. He just doesn't listen well. Wait, what show is this? Next on Ugly Third. Which one is, what are we doing? Welcome back, sports fans, to another episode of Ugly Thirds. Today's topic is Canadian's Canadian barber, barber pole. pole. Can't look at them when I talk anymore. Uh, uh rating Raider. That was also a reading, ra <laughs> reading rainbow. rainbow? What? what? <laughs> to be fair, that was also a comment on my report card too. Which I can't look at him when I talk to him. <laughs> All right, true, true story. True story. Phil came home incensed, incensed, talking about how he is being forced to take a literacy literacy class as a teacher of middle school students. How dare he? Have to take such a thing. He knows how to read. I do know how to read. He's <laughs> teaching others, though. I don't have to teach others. It's not my job. Canadian These barber two, pole. We raiders. promised. We promised that we would stick to a script here and not go off the rails. Uh, there, there was an expectation like four minutes ago that this was going to get done okay, okay. in an hour or less. Okay. Wait, did you just say we don't? Follow yeah, you don't follow directions well. <laughs> Boy, they were onto something, and they they, they might have, <laughs> weren't they? Um, so this show, what's the purpose of the show? The good news is, is that if you're looking for a barber pole, we've uh, again purchased all of them. No, so, just to let you know, not quite. Six ninety nine is where we're starting, and we're throwing in these hangers. Remember these things from the the ranking shows? We're They're gonna, still around. There's still an option. We're gonna throw in a box of those for you. Um, whole box so my we, god we, I wow ordered, i ordered a gross so <laughs> so that burp in the middle was gross so thanks Excuse Rick. me uh we're looking at rare jerseys rare jerseys the cornerstone of any collection and you probably want more info and we can talk about them waxing poetic and we figured ranking things ranking is fun so we're rating the rarities with a a, a five point system a five category system each out of ten phil go ahead and do your thing Trems, you want to peer in close so you I can do it. Oh, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Any day now. I will yeah. throw a change in camera. What are you Jersey doing? What I was doing, don't worry about it. Really. What was okay? Was it the literature, literacy class? <laughs> so we're looking at appearance. How good does it look? Noticeability. Will people know that you're wearing something rare when you go to, to the game? Number kit. How good is the number kit for this thing? Blur, blur. The rarity. Can you find this thing? And the value when you do find it, how much is it going? Should it cost you? All right. Two minutes. That's all we get. Because the first, we lost like six minutes laughing at each other. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's going to be the best watch part. <laughs> okay. So there are, so in, in 2000, between 2008 and 2010, because I kind of wrote the 2009 calendar year because the 1909 season, yes. their first season, was the count only in the calendar year, so it kind of rides. Um, they did five jerseys, including this one, the 1915-16 jersey, uh, the red one with the green maple leaf on it, which I have as a sweater and nothing, because good luck. Yep. Um, the blue one with the big C, the 1909 one, which they have a Fanatics version you can buy. I'm sure, people will love that. Serious. Um, yeah, that does muddy that one. Mm -hmm. I have, yeah, you, you you have one of those. I have one of those. Mm -hmm. And then the barber pole. Oh, and and the white one that they've worn a thousand times as a third jersey. The oh, 35 one was yeah, in there as well. Yeah. But they that's dime a dozen, that one. 
Um, the barber pole by far the most popular and unpopular. Iconic of that series. Yes, yeah. iconic. Now, there are different ways to get this jersey. Before I was able to acquire this one, I went to Boris Custom Jerseys, oh, which yeah. I plan to buy a couple more from him. So this is a screen printed one, and, and I didn't want... I don't like fakes if the real one exists and is attainable. So this is not technically the 2009 one. This is the actual 1911-12. As seen by it's brighter, the collar is round with uh, three things in it, and there is a num sleeve number. No back number. They didn't wear they didn't wear back numbers. But if you look at the photo, there is a sleeve number. And this is a one for George Vesna. Never Pro heard of him. Like eagle eyed in the in the in the pictures. But I, I honestly I think it's probably for the equipment manager of whose jersey, whose sweater is this. Sure. Um it's thin, it's bright, uh, it was fifty bucks. So and then you could go on the Canadians website. Tricolor Sports, which I guarantee I'm pronouncing wrong. I'm told I speak my French with a German accent, so I'm not trying that hard. Uh, Tricolor. Um, you could buy this sweater. The, how much were they run? About a hundred, hundred twenty-five. Like twenty-nine, one twenty-nine. Yeah, because I mean, like the, the exchange rate was very low, and they weren't expensive. They're very reasonable. Um, so this is Phil's sweater. Uh, before you got the actual barber pole, and they're nice. They're good quality. Uh, you can wash them. Um. Unlike his Ebbetsfield flannels, I uh, would recommend. Look, if you can't get it, you want the look, you get a sweater. It's a sweater. It's an actual knit sweater. That it is. Wool it's poly blend. Sweater. So, everyone loves sweaters. So, but this is the one, this is the Reebok one, worn that season as a throwback, uh, and this is the actual subject of our episode. Okay, so we did a lot of talking in previous episodes and then ended up repeating ourselves in this conversation. Yeah. So I say we jump in and then you just want to jump straight in. Give our give our insights because I think okay. we're going to cover what this is. Maybe that's why these episodes run long. We're double we're doubling. Why the last one was 48 minutes. So appearance. This thing is hideous and the more of them you see the worse they get. I'm not going to give it a 0 because it does exist, but I am going to give it a 1. I went 2 um under the same principle like it 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 exists but it's oh and more like it, it it's not bright like that dallas no. jersey it's not neon but this vibrates in 2009 this is atrocious in 1909 whenever Barber poles were common yeah this was not completely out of the realm of possibility Ottawa, I mean, we're still Ottawa rugby did one. was still old, so uh, I yeah. bumped it up and elevated it to two. I wore this to work, and someone said, "Oh, you're wearing an actual shirt." Like I thought it was like a polo or something, because you will see the ones that are not that it's far a off. Fila right here, but it's also how tight these stripes are. Like it is, it is. There's a lot of stripes. Right, it's, it's well rough. Let's just do ten. It, uh, yes, I'm on the same page. Noticeability, you're getting noticed. Yeah, you're you're walking like you are. You are walking into a rink where everyone looks with something like this of a, a midriff blue stripe on a red jersey, unless you're Phil with his reverse retro. Um, this is this is something. Number kit. I, the I, like I had this is one of the first ones I had to get. As soon as I got it, I knew I had to get it customized, and I'm, I'm glad I also got the the A on it. Um, Alexei Kovalev, in order to be visible, and this, I, with it being 1911-12, I don't think numbers were, like, numbers just weren't a thing, right? They, no one needed to identify them. Was, in uh, fact, probably on the sleeve. That imagine. one, yeah. that one, which, um, in fact, like, the numbers were an invention of the Patrick brothers, Lester Patrick, who would eventually own the, the Rangers, um, coach the Rangers, coach the Rangers, um, own the Rangers, correct me. It's the same thing. Back then. Um, they put numbers on sweaters to ID so fans could identify players and therefore have star players who they'd identify and like it would sell more. They could sell the, the their hockey cards. Like that was an invention in the turn of the century stuff. So this is a modern addition. But in rugby jerseys, it's very common to put a square of fabric. Uh, you'll see it in the Toronto St. Pat's uniforms. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Square on top. Uh, and I think by doing this, this is extremely legible. Like, in this sea of chaos, this calm look draws your eye like nothing else. It had to be done. I find it amusing that there's nothing for the... Like, and they should have put a square or a circle on this. That's where it's going to lose points for me. Like, you have... You've, you've gone out of your way to make 
the fan notice the name and the number, but we stopped and didn't do the... I mean, considering how many things were now dropping sleeve numbers, which is egregious, um, look, I, I think that with the legibility, um, that this is a proper piece of twill, which... Yeah. Um, and how visible it is, and just how different it looks, this is, this is among my favorites. Like, this is up there really? with... It's a 10. Like, wow. I think this is absolutely outstanding. It's so visible. It's such a big deal. It's so unique. I guess. Uh, I brought it back down. It's, for me, like, I don't... It. They did what they needed to do, but other than this square here, like, it's a nameplate. It's it's a number kit. There's no uniqueness to it. I think the, the biggest draw to it is the visibility of it being on this. I, I think that most teams would have simply gotten away with a nice chunky outline and said figure it out and they they did not they chose sure. to they chose to go very of the era sure. and i love it sure so um what's next the rarity you can find these but it is not a constant like whereas you go on ebay you can find a lightning storm jersey any any day of the week you'll find them sure. they're they're overpriced but they're there yeah this you might find one or two. You're not gonna find more. That you gotta wait for them to pop up, and usually they last about a week and a half before they're gone. Sometimes longer if they're overpriced. So I am kind of splitting the difference. I think it's a seven. These things have been. It they've had such a weird trajectory, like they were introduced to the fan base. Fans didn't want them. Mm -mm. These things flopped in two thousand and nine. Which I, oh, I wish I would have bought the whole set then. And I then was all of a sudden, for whatever reason, five years later, everybody wants one. And the people who do have them realize, wow, somebody's going to be willing to pay a couple hundred dollars for this thing that I bought on clearance from, from Sport Check or whatever you guys got up there. Um, I'm, yes, I'm kind of with you in this one. Um, in the idea that you can get one if you if you truly want one, they're gonna be out there. Um, it's just of the I I would say of the the ones that were released, this one is probably the most or one of the most accessible. Yeah, the, the other one, one the won't tree find. one, you're not gonna find. Not find them. Uh, the blue one, the blue I, one. I know of one. It's overpriced. I've been waiting for the guy to drop the price, and he hasn't for almost a year. So, and it's got a spot on it too. So it's like, am I really going to overpay when there's a there's a grease there. spot on it? You know. But this one, I mean, this one, the one that you're wearing, a you, casual fan is going to blend in with. And you can find these. Yeah. You, I mean, the, that that's the difference. It's slightly darker. It is slightly darker than your average Canadian jersey. But it, but it 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 it's. But it's it's not that red with the green tree on it like that one. It's not the blue one not with the, the white C. Like those those two, you just do not find. Yeah, this is a little bit more accessible. Um, and as, as such, let's see what how how much would I actually agree with it? I, I I'm saying it's about two hundred bucks. When you find them, you can get them around two hundred. If you want to make sure you nail it, and not like well maybe I get it this time, maybe I don't. It's going to be a little more expensive, probably in the two fifty range. So it's similar. Like yeah. it's 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 I, I I would love to know how how that whole trend started with these things. Like what what was it who, like in Who was the and... person who who developed this marketing scheme? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reintroduce these things. Or are we just not realizing that there was such a short run of these things that maybe they weren't unpopular, it's just that they but... didn't mass produce them like they do Right, and the people the who bought rebels. them were the ones who wanted them, and so like, just not a lot of selling them off until much later. And could be, yeah. maybe, maybe they didn't flop. Maybe they just didn't lean into the market like they. If they you could. have info, let us know. Yeah, like I was purely speculating, but maybe yeah. now thinking about as it. as Phil's calculating, I I do think that this is one of those jerseys where every collector who's really serious about it needs one. Like I really think this is one of those ones where you like you you if if you're if this is the modern version of the lightning bolt. Yeah. To me. I think that like if you if you're in a nineties collecting phase, you need the lightning one. Yeah. You need the lightning storm. If you want the modern jerseys, this is this is the one. It's not that old. It's accessible enough. This is one of those benchmark jerseys. That's a, that's a good fireside chat. Yeah. Like of the nineties, which of the three must you own? If you're a serious collector, which ones from that era should you own? Uh, yeah, and and I guess from the Reebok era too. Which ones 
are a must to own. This is this is on the list. Yeah. Easy, without a doubt. Phil, what's our scores? Hey. I think this is going in like around the St. Pat's. I think this is like third, fourth. I'm gonna say below St. Pat's. Tied with St. Pat's. Oh, okay. Look at that consistency. We have a lot of. Yeah, I'm not I, upset about it. No, it. no, no. We just got to get that Canucks heritage out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep bumping it down the down the list. But that's yeah, that's, that's a that's a good looking list so far. Yeah, it's a good looking list. It works. All right. Great. So uh, I'm satisfied with that. And what do you think? Uh, how many of you have one of these? Uh, how do you how do you feel about our opinions on this? Um, any other thoughts? No. Okay. <laughs> Peace, Shrems. I'm John. Phil, why don't you? Uh... Take us out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Ring the bell to get notifications when we post new videos. And come back for another episode of Ugly Thirds. You, you don't have one of these? N no, but the player okay. that I need for all of them, it's the same. It's the okay. same That's player. embarrassing. Oh, wow.